All right, so it is 11 a.m. on the East Coast USA, 10 a.m. in Nashville, and uh, we have the first webinar of this semester, and we have a very special guest, uh, Lori Autumn, and uh, she's the Director for International Relations um, for the Nashville Area Chamber of Commerce. And I hope I got that right. And uh, so the way we will run this meeting today is uh, the following. So uh, we will start with a quick introduction and uh, of the company, and uh, we will allocate to that, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, and we will let the presenter talk uh, whatever she believes is, is important. Meanwhile, if you have the questions, if you're live here with us, uh, feel free to uh, ask them, and you can ask them by either typing the questions in the comments or uh, raising hand. And uh, there is a button somewhere on your screen but, which literally says raise hand. And if you do that, um, I will be able to add you to us and you will be one of the essential speakers who will hear you and see you. And you can engage in the conversation if you would like to do so. And if you happen to be now in a class, uh, which is probably the case for most students in America, uh, basically the United States, Northern American and Southern America, South American, North America. So if you would like to send a question, you can just send an email to admin at xculture.org. We are monitoring that one as well, and we will uh, ask your questions to the presenter. And then obviously those of you who hear me, uh, you are live here, but uh, if you have to miss uh, the live session in the future, we are recording these webinars, and the recording will be posted uh, shortly after the webinar, so this way you can watch it later. Or if, for example, you would like to rewind and uh, rewatch some moments, uh, you will have a recording. And uh, so we will stop, or I will stop here, and we'll uh, let uh, uh, Lori talk. So um, please, the floor is yours. Great. Um, I am Lori Odom. I'm the Vice President of International Business at the Nashville Area Chamber of Commerce. We are located in the United States, in the state of Tennessee, which is in the southeastern United States. Um, pretty centrally located in uh, the population distribution of the United States. Um, our state is about 6 million people. Our region is uh, roughly 1.9 million and quickly growing. Our organization is a chamber of commerce. So you may be familiar with chambers of commerce in your cities or in your states. They are um, organizations that businesses join to support business. So we have kind of two sides to our organization. The Chamber of Commerce, which is where any business in our region would join because we support uh, issues and policies that make our area friendly to do business uh, and really promote economic prosperity in our region. So we have, through our Chamber of Commerce, members that are huge companies like HCA, which is Hospital Corporation of America, Vanderbilt University, uh, Dollar General, uh, Community Health Systems, um, LifePoint Health, uh, just about any company that you can think of, Gibson Guitars, um, lots of different companies huge companies, but also small companies. So if I'm a one person organization, I may join the Chamber of Commerce because I know that that organization is gonna support me around business friendly issues. Um, we also have a policy department through that organization that helps uh, really uh, helps with economic prosperity issues, issues around workforce development. Um, that's really kind of our Chamber of Commerce role is membership, business services, business development, keeping a business friendly environment in our community. Another part of our chamber is the part that I work in, and that is our economic development department. We have an entity within the chamber called Partnership 2020, and that is where organizations invest in our economic development plan. So economic development at its core is about creating jobs and creating capital investment and creating opportunities for economic growth and prosperity in the area that you are representing. For us, that's a 10 county region that is really centered by Nashville, which is our city or our state capital, our, our 
kind of head of government for the state of Tennessee. We are our most populous region. So the most people in Tennessee live within this 10 county region. And we're our fastest growing area of the state. So we are um, one of the fastest growing metros in the United States. We are, I think, 11th amongst big cities that are growing in population in the U.S. We add about 100 people every day to our region. So very fast growing, very well known in the United States as a center for creativity. Um, we are the home of the music industry, the country music industry. We have more jobs in the music industry per capita than either New York or LA. Our area of music is really around um, publishing. We have the recording studios, the country and Western music genre is very popular and is based out of Nashville, Tennessee, but also popular artists like uh, Jack White, if you're familiar with the White Stripes, he has a large presence here. The Black Keys, Kings of Leon, if you're familiar with American popular music, you may know those bands that are outside of the country uh, in Western realm. So Nashville is known as a center for creativity, both through the music industry, but also through the entrepreneurial spirit that exists here. Um, our largest kind of structured economic drivers are healthcare management. Um, this is really the business side of hospital management. The model that the U.S. follows, which is for for-profit health care, was conceived in Nashville, Tennessee, by a company called HCA, which is Hospital Corporation of America. They manage uh, a very large percentage of the U.S. hospital beds out of Nashville, Tennessee. There are 18 publicly traded companies that employ about 250,000 people in our region with an economic impact of around 39 billion in our 10 county region and worldwide, that number goes up to about 500,000 jobs and around $78 billion. Uh, HCA owns hospitals in London. If you Google HCA London, you'll see that uh, you're probably familiar with some of the names if you're in the UK market. In London, like London Bridge Hospital is one of those. Um, we have another company in Nashville called Acadia that manages mental health facilities. They have an operation uh, all around the U.S., but in London called the Priory that you might also be familiar with if you're in a European market. So our economic drivers, number one is the healthcare management industry. So maybe a, a tip for those of you that are looking for um, a, a market, uh, something that could be popular in our market is um, something that services the healthcare industry from the management side, or something that is a product or good that could be sold into hospital chains. So for example, if you have a company in a market that sells um, IV bags or sells a, a product or a good a medical device, that might be something that could enter our market because the buying power is here. So second to healthcare, we have a strong presence in advanced manufacturing. And this is where you may find the best opportunities for companies that would be looking to enter the U.S. market. The majority of our foreign direct investment and foreign direct investment is where the parent company is located in a foreign market and has entered the United States. Most of our foreign direct investment is, is in the realm of advanced manufacturing. Some huge foreign direct investors in our area are Nissan, Nissan put its very first North American automotive assembly facility in an area called Smyrna, Tennessee in 1981 is when the first car came off the line. 
It was their largest investment outside of Japan. It's their most uh, productive facility that they have. And it really drew in a lot of automotive investment from Japan. So currently, Japan is our number one foreign direct investment market. And the majority of that investment is in the automotive manufacturing side. We also have um, a corporate services sector. So international companies like UBS, which is a, um, a, banking, uh, a banking structure, they have some of their back office kind of corporate services functions here in Nashville. So they have a large presence here. We have large companies like Willis Insurance, uh, Jackson National Life Insurance, that are headquartered in the UK, but choose to have their US headquarters in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, what you should also know is for companies that are looking to enter the US market, when you look at our materials and something that I would suggest you guys check out, you have a link to this brochure right here. This is gonna give you all of the information about Nashville and all of our selling points. So when you're wondering why a company would come to Nashville, all of those questions are going to be answered by looking at this brochure. So the reason most of them come here is because they want to enter the US market and they want to be in a centrally located um, location. They want access to a good workforce they want to do business in a lower cost area of the country, and that's Tennessee, that's Nashville. They may want low unionized labor force, and we have a lower union rate than our uh, competitor states like New York or maybe California or Michigan. Um, they may be looking for a quality of life, and Nashville has a, a very unique quality of life through our um, music industry that I mentioned, our kind of creativity. There's been a tremendous amount of growth. We're a young, dynamic location, um, a fun place to visit, a fun place to live. We have four seasons, so you really see the difference between winter and spring and summer and fall. It's not just all hot. Um, as it might be in certain areas of the country or all cold, like it might be in others. Um, we have bi very mild winters, so it's also easy to get product in and out of our location. You're not going to have a lot of weather delays. If you are manufacturing a product or a good, that could be very important for your uh, considerations around where to load. Um, what we are looking for from you and what I need your help with is looking at the established markets that are already coming into Nashville. Um, like I mentioned, Japan is a large investor. The United Kingdom, companies from there invest a lot here. When I say invest, I'm talking about opening locations that employ people and have a capital investment attached. So we're not looking just for people to come in and say, buy a hotel or buy an office building. We're looking for companies that want to come into the region and open an operation and hire people and locate here. So our established markets are places like Japan, Germany, the UK, Switzerland, um, there's others, Italy is one that's a growing market for us, Spain, France. Um, there's more information in the um, X Culture Challenge that you can read about our specific markets. For markets that are already developed, what I need your help with is identifying any new sectors that might be looking to come into the United States. So where we already see a lot of growth in advanced manufacturing, if you see um, a new sector, maybe there's opportunities for um, uh, telecommunications companies to come into the United States that want to be based in the Nashville region. Or if there are companies that are manufacturing, like I said, healthcare, manuf healthcare goods 
or services that want to come into the United States, we might be a market for those companies. Or if you want to look at completely new markets that are starting to invest outside of their home country that you think would be good areas for us to focus on to increase foreign direct investment from those regions, that's also something that we would be interested in seeing. So for example, if you are, um, if you're located in, um, let's say, um, Western Europe or, or Eastern Europe, and some Eastern European countries are starting to do more business in the United States, or if you're in Australia, Australia is a market that's fairly underrepresented by foreign direct investment in Tennessee. Maybe you think, maybe you can think of companies or sectors within Australia that Nashville would appeal to them to base their U.S. operations as they enter into the United States. So that's what we're looking for, either ways to expand our opportunities in our established markets or new markets that might look to increase their participation in the United States. Second to that, we are starting our very first nonstop flight to London Heathrow Airport on May 4th. This is going to be huge for us in connecting to European markets. So as we begin to develop more relationships in the London market, I would also seek your assistance in looking at our four key industries and helping me identify organizations that you think would be good partners for the Nashville Area Chamber as we develop that relationship. So really, Within this project, there are kind of three different angles that your team could take. Looking at established markets and telling us where you see further opportunities. Looking at new markets and giving us ideas about the types of companies in those new markets and why those new markets might be interested in, in opening companies in Nashville. Or you can look at the UK or look at more broadly at Europe and thinking about how this nonstop flight from Nashville to London is going to put us in a position to build relationships with organizations and business in the UK specifically, but maybe further out into greater areas of Europe. Those kinds of organizations might be things like partner economic development entities. Um, they might be associations for the sectors. So for example, if you are in London, is there a healthcare organization that has member companies that are involved in the healthcare industry that would be beneficial for us to meet and connect with so that we might be able to build relationships and business partnerships down the road? Are there automobile manufacturing associations? Are there aerospace associations? Are there uh, music and entertainment associations there um, around music production or companies um, that you think that would be beneficial for us to begin conversations so that they know more about Nashville and we know more about what they do? So, Vast, I think with that, that's a good overview of kind of what we're looking for. That's actually a very good overview. We have received quite a few questions and you literally answer them as if you see them because many of the things that they were trying to ask. So, but we do have some questions that have not been answered so far. And so I'll, I'll try to group them uh, in some way, but uh, a couple of people asked, so what exactly uh, does a Chamber of Commerce do? Like what are the specific activities or events that you organize? Okay, what, what I would, um, you go on our website, www.nashvillechamber.com and you can get an idea of the various types of programs that the chamber offers. However, for our program specifically, we're really focused on the economic development side of the Chamber of Commerce. So while you may want to get a holistic overview of what we do, 
The area that I focus on is economic development, which is creating jobs and creating opportunities for economic growth and development within our 10 county region. So I don't while you may want to look, I, I don't think you need to spend a lot of time understanding that piece of our organization, really focus on economic development right. and what it is and what the drivers to economic development are in our region. Mm -hmm. And you can find all of that on our website under the economic development tab. Mm -hmm. And then a sort of a related question um, about your competition, let's call it this way. So the question is, do all states or cities have chambers of commerce? And if they do, how are they different? How is yours better than others, I guess? Okay. Um, all, all states, most states, I should say, not all of them, have a state-level chamber of commerce. Where, but let, let me separate this for you guys to maybe make it easier. Don't think about us necessarily as the Chamber of Commerce. Think about us as a city that's right. competing with other cities to recruit companies and industry. So our competitors are peer cities like Atlanta, uh, Indianapolis, uh, Indiana, Tampa, Florida, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, Los Angeles, Austin, Texas, those are our competitors. And what, what differentiates Nashville is our location, our central location in the United States, our creative in young workforce. And once again, you'll see all of these kind of outlined on our uh, website. Um, the number of uh, graduating college students that are here, we have a, a large um, a large number of students that are enrolled in 20 colleges and universities um, that want to stay in this region. So as companies locate, they look for the workforce that's available. We have a very strong, compelling workforce story, um, and we have an excellent quality of life that I mentioned um, that is somewhat unique when you put us to a, uh, another city in our area. It's just maybe the difference between being in uh, let's say London or Manchester right. or, um, you know, Rome or um, Torino. They're just different places. Right, right. Well, I've been to Nashville a number of times and I do agree that first of all, it's a centrally located city. You have a wonderful climate. It's not too cold, not too hot. You have the mountains. Uh, you have uh, nice four seasons, as you said, but your winters are not too cold, summers are not too hot. And the whole area, not only the Tennessee, but it seems like the entire southern United States is a major magnet for manufacturing. I know you have Nissan headquartered in Tennessee, but then you have Mercedes-Benz makes their cars in Alabama just across the street, uh, BMW is in South Carolina. So basically, it seems like this whole region is a good place to do business. So um, this, this is the fastest growing area in the United right. States yeah. from a manufacturing standpoint and also from population growth. Um, the state of Tennessee has um, a Volkswagen manufacturing facility oh, here I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. in Chattanooga, Tennessee. They manufacture Volkswagen Passat vehicles. Um, we have our, you mentioned uh, uh, Mercedes-Benz, mm -hmm. uh, we are kind of surrounded by Toyota facilities, mm -hmm. um, Hyundai, Kia. Um, we are also a large manufacturer of uh, tires. So mm -hmm. Bridgestone, so Japanese, has tire manufacturing facilities all around Middle Tennessee. Uh, Hankook Tire out of uh, Korea has a manufacturing facility uh, about 45 minutes from here, and their U.S. offices are here in Nashville. Um, there's a, a large segment and to get a, a better feel for Nashville, I would encourage students to go to our YouTube page. The Nashville Chamber has a YouTube page and you can see some videos that, that kind of give you the spirit of Nashville and what's happening here. And I think it can make you feel like you've been here in uh, two or three minutes. Right. Um, about the markets, so you did mention that uh, much of the business in Nashville uh, came from uh, Japan, uh, from Europe. 
are there markets, a couple of students asking, are there markets uh, that you would not be happy to receive investment from? Or, or, or are there markets, I assume, maybe that you're most interested in and maybe perhaps less interested in? Or as long as they're um, willing, willing to invest, it doesn't matter where they come from. Um, it really doesn't matter where they come from. Um, I would say to really be a viable market, I would see what other U.S. investment uh, is coming out of that market. So as you're doing your research, if um, I would look at it maybe two different ways. Um, and I can, um, Voss, can I send you a uh, list of all of the markets and the number of companies that sure, are yeah, in we it, Yeah, we can add it to the, yeah, to the challenge. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll send you that. Um, if it's a market that is, um, has never invested into the United States, that may not be a good market to pursue just because it may be unrealistic that yeah. they have the infrastructure to make a U.S. operation work. So I would maybe do some research on, um, on markets where U.S. investment is their number one foreign direct outbound investment. Yeah. Uh, often you can do that type of research through um, kind of national level economic development entities, um, commerce divisions, um, if you just Google, um, you know, foreign direct investment into U.S. and put a market, you know, uh, Macedonia or whatever you want to put, uh, Italy, you can get an idea of kind of what's out there and, and how many companies are here and what areas are popular and maybe what hasn't entered the U.S. that you think might have a good opportunity. Um, you know, an idea from us is uh, we have a concentration of Italian tile manufacturers. We happen to be randomly located between um, the largest deposits of um, the two components that make the type of clay that is uh, used in uh, tile manufacturing. So we have um, a couple of different Italian tile manufacturers We've started to see entrance from Chinese tile manufacturers. Um, China has been a growth market for us. Right. Korea is a growth market for us. Well, these are established FDI markets, uh, South Korea more so than China. There's a lot of potential to invest, I guess, in the United States and in our area of the country from, I would say, uh, France is underrepresented, uh, Spain, Italy, uh, you know, China is a growing investor, mm -hmm. so that could be a good area to look at. You know, every market has its own complications where it can be harder for a Chinese company to invest in the U.S. just because of getting the currency out of their country to mm -hmm. make the investment, but it does happen, and it's definitely growing, so to for us to be able to have some insight as to where that growth may be coming from, uh, that could also be very helpful for us. Um, but that's kind of where I would start. Yeah, a developing story is uh, today it has been announced uh, that the U.S. is going to impose uh, a significant import tariffs on solar pa panels and washing machines. And so what that may lead to is that some of the importers will have to relocate the production into the United States to avoid paying the import tariffs. And if that happens, again, uh, Tennessee may be a nice destination for that uh, manufacturing facility. So um, Exactly. We, we just announced uh, probably February or March, LG is opening their very first manufacturing facility in our 10-county region in a city called Clarksville just because of that. Yeah. Because uh, as export or import duties are um, enacted by our government, they have to manufacture here to be cost competitive. So um, you're right. exactly right. There may be some opportunities for um, foreign solar or, um, uh, like you said, the the washing machines and right, some of right. these. Well, IG makes them, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, a few questions related to marketing. So, what kind of promotion channels do you currently use? How do you advertise or attract or communicate with the potential investors now? It is, for us, our first line of 
promotion is through our state offices. So the state of Tennessee has offices that encourage foreign direct investment in um, Italy, Benelux, China, Japan, South Korea. Um, they so just they literally have offices with staff, people who do some yes. promotion and meetings and networking. Yes. And, okay. Yes. Most of them are consultants. So uh, it, only in Japan is there uh, really an office you can walk into. Uh -huh. But yes, those are, are really our front line. So okay. they're meeting with companies that may be uh, looking to enter the U.S. market. So we have relationships with those offices. Um, we, those partner entities that I talked about um, that are kind of our equivalent on the, on the other side, so in foreign markets, um, like chambers of commerce, departments of commerce, industry organizations, site selection consultants. So organizations that basically serve um, more or less as real estate agents and consultants to help companies find locations in the U.S. We work closely with those types of entities to make sure that they're aware of Nashville and what we offer here. Um, we constantly are promoting Nashville as a place to do business. We are um, kind of arming our businesses locally that do business around the world to be able to tell our business story. So as they meet um, someone they're selling a product or a good to, or they're doing business with, they can say, hey, have you thought about doing business in Nashville? Um, it, it is a softer sell. There is not, um, there is not a robust budget for us to promote. There may be uh, opportunities for some events in the market, um, but that would be really have to be a targeted market. There's not necessarily the money for the Nashville Chamber to staff an office in a foreign country. So we're really looking at very cost-effective ways to build those relationships, very targeted um, in order to, to build our reputation and name recognition in foreign markets. Mm -hmm. Two students asked a very interesting question and I wouldn't know how to answer. They ask, is it ethical or is it um, a practice uh, where you send direct mail to the basically CEOs of the big companies overseas and offer them to consider moving to, uh, to Tennessee? And have you ever th thought about social media uh, or promotion through social media? Is it done at all? Like one student asks, is it even feasible to think in that direction? And another one asks, if we did it, would it be okay? Is that something that is uh, you know, frowned upon or it's perfectly acceptable? Sure. Um, I would say we have a social media. We have a, a Twitter feed. We have a, a Facebook feed. Um, we have promoted more of the chamber activities or events um, than really targeting foreign market interaction, but I would love to see ideas right. about how to increase um, uh, kind of likes or how to increase connections through social media in foreign markets. If anybody has ideas about that, that would be very helpful. Um, we can send letters. That's not something that, that is discouraged. Um, you know, I would say realistically, um, let's say you have a budget of, if you're, if we're going to spend a budget in marketing, let's, let's say no more than 15,000 U.S. dollars. Um, just so you a, few million, a few million impressions on, on, on Facebook. So that's a huge actually budget if you want to use social media. You know, and that's something that I, I could not say that that's going to be budgeted for, but mm -hmm. if the case there, that helps me kind of make the case of why that would be money yeah. well spent. Yeah. Um, in our experience, letters don't get opened and don't really work. Yeah. So um, I would not spend a tremendous amount of time on a letter campaign. Now, an example that we use is, this is, I don't know if you guys can see this. It's like a magazine? It's Rolling Stone Magazine 
which um, you might be familiar with Rolling Stone. It's a national publication, an international publication that's about the music industry that is, um, has been around for a long time, very popular. And they did a special issue on Nashville. So this is all about Nashville. Um, you know, it's a, a good selling piece. We are going to mail these to the consultants that we work with who work often with projects and with some target companies just to put Nashville on their radar. Things like this, mailing things like this with a note attached seem to get better mm. response and better um, impressions than just sending a letter. Yeah, yeah. One important question, and I wish it came earlier. Um, so who are the decision makers or what's your audience? Like who exactly decides to come to Nashville? Would it be owners of the companies? Would it be government officials? Would it be some random people? Um, it depends on the market, but primarily it is the owner of the company. If it's a privately held company, um, if it is a um, company that's run through a board of directors, then, you know, the board usually makes the approval, but the president or CEO usually puts it forward. If it's a large company, then there are multi layers in the decision making. Um, but really, ultimately, it's the owner or the top person or the board of directors that makes the ultimate decision. But there are... Um, multiple channels that kind of must be convinced that this is a good idea. Mm -hmm. There is another question. So a student is saying that when she's flying, she always sees those magazines in flight magazines on the airplane, and there are all kinds of promotions for different areas. So is that something you would also consider doing? Yeah, we would definitely consider that. That's something we have not done, but um, would love to see more um, kind of data and research put into mm -hmm. um, maybe what it would be like cost-wise to advertise into, let's say, uh, British Airways magazine, is that's kind of our, our yeah. unique place right now. I wonder if there is a way to advertise only to the business class, because I think your decision makers probably will be flying uh, business class, So, uh, but I, I don't know how those magazines work. Maybe students can do yeah. some research here. Um, and then again, a, another question related to the entry mode. Uh, so at this time, you said that you have some offices and some partner consultants that you work with. Do you also work with the governments or other chambers of commerce or other types of collaborations uh, that you would consider? We definitely do and would love to learn more about where those opportunities might lie in new markets. We have great relationships on the U.S. side more than in, in a foreign market. Um, we are developing relationships. Uh, an example of that would be a, an organization called London and Partners, which is the mayor of London's uh, economic development entity. So they focus on economic development and tourism for the London market. So we are beginning to build relationships with London and Partners. Um, and organizations like that in key foreign markets are very interesting to us and would be um, greatly appreciated to maybe have further insight into where you guys see the most value for us as an organization in building those relationships. We work very often with, if you're familiar with um, the US structure, foreign markets have consulate offices here. So we have relationships with the consular offices um, that basically uh, have economic development people who are encouraging companies from their markets to enter the U.S. and U.S. companies to mm -hmm. enter their market. For example, because of the Japanese investment that's here, the Japanese government has located their consulate office. They cover five states, and they're located in Nashville, Tennessee. And we have a really good working relationship with them. So if they get a call from a company that has a question or wants to enter the U.S., they would connect them to us so we can help them learn more about the Nashville market. Um, and we build relationships with those consulates. It's not always um, just to get a company to come here. It's because we want those people to have a positive impression of Nashville, Tennessee, because oftentimes economic development 
happens purely through relationships. And it may, you may meet someone uh, two years, and then it might be two years before you get a call from them saying, I met a company that is looking to come to the US and Nashville's where they want to be, but you want to have a relationship with them so they remember you and understand why companies should operate here. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we, we keep getting questions, but it seems to me most of them are repetitive, so I'm not going to ask them again. Uh, those who missed the initial part of the meeting can obviously watch it later on. But there are a few students who ask questions not related specifically to the challenge, but in general, career counseling kind of. So they're asking if you had to start your career all over again, uh, what would you do? And another student asks, uh, what's the best strategy to make sure that he can get a good job when he graduates? And most of them say, uh, you're uh, holding such a prominent position. What was your secret? So questions of that kind. So um, advice for students who will be graduating either with a bachelor's or a master's degree within a year or so. What can they Great. do to maximize their chances of getting a good job like yours? Um, I would say um, for any field that you are interested in pursuing, relationships are key. So know that every person that you meet you may come in contact with again, or you may con come in contact with somebody that knows that person. So even if it's a job that you really hate and you're not interested in, do your best, because the odds are that the early jobs you have in your career are not gonna be your dream jobs. Um, and also know that where you think you're going to wind up may not be what you wind up doing. So you have to be flexible for changes and flexible around um, opportunities when they come. And don't be afraid to take chances and, and try new things and stretch where you feel comfortable because you don't walk into a job being an expert right. and need to learn. Um, so you, you need to you know, be realistic about where you are in your career, but push yourself to constantly be learning more. Um, I started my career, oh, let's see, 23 years ago. I graduated from college, and I was a broadcasting major. Broadcasting. So I thought, oh. I, yes, I, <laughs> thought I would be uh, on the radio or on the TV, and I found out very late how much money they made and what you really had to do to, to work up to a, the level that they wanted, that I wanted to be. And I just thought, you know, I, I'm just not that interested in this. This is not what I want to do. So I looked at sales and marketing and I would tell you the most valuable experience you can have in your career is sales and marketing. Right. Yeah. Um, even if it's only a few years Everything you do in life is selling, selling. You're, if you're an engineer, you're selling the design and why it's important. If you are a teacher, you're selling to the students why they should care about what you're teaching them. Mm -hmm. So it's great, great well, the, uh, the richest man on earth is now a salesperson, Jeff Bezos of Amazon. So no longer yeah. it's, uh, it's Bill Gates, it's, it's now Amazon guy. So... Yeah, it's selling an idea, it's selling a concept, and it, it just prepares you. So I went into uh, sales and radio. I did that for about two years. I did not like it, um, but I transitioned into a job in higher education, um, and I worked recruiting students for colleges and universities. So I was selling to them why they needed to pick my school, um, and through that opportunity, I, I wasn't at all prepared. I didn't think I would ever do that, but I loved it. I loved talking to people. I loved helping people. I loved encouraging them to grow and to, to be more um, and, and to really help them find their path. And I was a very hard worker. I've always been a hard worker. And I received a promotion and another promotion and got to work in different areas um, and in different universities. And I came to the Chamber of Commerce 
uh, sorry, my story is long, but uh, that, I can't that's exactly what she was interested in. They will be going, kind of making that same journey, literally. So yeah, so. yeah. So I, I started at the Chamber of Commerce in a completely different job in uh, 2001, and I worked with high school students that wanted to explore careers, and I worked with the business community to help high school students connect to uh, job shadowing opportunities. And I'll be honest, I didn't really like the job. It was kind of boring. It was, um, you know, you do it one time, you kind of understand what you're doing. It wasn't very challenging. But I loved the environment and the culture of the Chamber of Commerce. And I was meeting wonderful people. And so I made really good connections here. Um, and then I, we had an economic downturn, 9-11 happened. Yeah. And uh, in the U.S., that was um, very detrimental to our economy. Um, it took about two years. It really slowed things. Companies didn't know what was going to happen. If you were a membership organization where people elect to join you, which we are, uh, in economic downturns, uh, people drop their memberships. So the, the job I had at that time, they restructured and it went away. So I was um, let go, I was made redundant here, and I went into another sales job. And then I went into economic development, which is my passion. I feel like I was 30 years old. I'd been working, oh, you know, nine years in, in various jobs to find the one job in the one area that I feel is the perfect match for all of my skills but I know I wouldn't be good at this job if I didn't have all of those other years right, of experience right. building relationships. So economic development is the perfect combination of helping people and bettering the place you live and finding opportunities for people uh, and making companies successful. And it's that, that kind of connection of doing good and selling people uh, on why your area is the best. And, and I truly feel that Nashville, Tennessee, and our region is, for many companies, the best place in the United States that they can operate, that they're going to have. Uh, Are you originally from there? Are you originally from Tennessee? Uh, I'm from... I'm from about an hour and 15 minutes from here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's a very small town of about 5,000 people. Um, but I was born outside of Detroit and then lived in Florida and moved to um, my small town when I was 12. Uh -huh. So for those of you that are looking for career advice, one, I would say consider economic development. Look yeah. at it. It's interesting. It's fun. It's a combination of marketing and sales and economics and um, there's lots of opportunities there. So, you know, kind of explore the industry. Never, uh, you know, never forget, especially if you're in a smaller area or in a smaller industry like economic development, it's very interconnected and people know each other and they remember you. So you always want to put right. your best foot forward. You always want to do your best job. Um, the chamber would have never hired me in economic development if I would have really just not not done my job when I didn't really like the first job I had. The same people that I worked with here helped me get my first job in economic development, and they hired me. They hired me here. I worked in our state government for several years, and when I left state government, they called me because they wanted to hire me for this job because I had worked for them and they knew I did a good job. So yeah. that's my advice to you. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Uh, we are pretty much out of time and I still see some questions coming by email, but we have attendees here. I see about a dozen people. So if you have any questions, um, we will give you the privilege to ask them. So if you have questions, please ask them now. You can either type them in the uh, comments box or literally just raise your hand. We will see you. Uh, there is a button there that literally says raise hand and you can engage and talk. So let's give you a few seconds to decide if you would like to ask any questions. And if so, uh, you'll have the chance. If not, uh, I guess we're pretty much ready to conclude the meeting. So, all right. Well, I don't see any raised hands. So everybody who was able to attend, Abraham, Emil, Ernesto, uh, uh, all the other, Catherine, Lillian, so thank you guys for being here.
there is a question from Abraham, any operations that links the African market? So do you do anything with Africa? You know, Africa is also, I would say, an underserviced market, right. an underrepresented market for us. Um, there's not a tremendous amount of investment. However, there may be opportunities around the healthcare sector mm -hmm. in South Africa. Um, that might be something to explore, but overall, we, we don't have a lot of uh, representation from Africa, but would definitely be open to opportunities should those exist. Yeah. yeah, and Africa, they predict that Africa will become very soon what China has been, you know, for the last 20 years. It's an untapped market, a huge continent, a lot of people, all kinds of resources. So they probably will see a huge economic growth, and I imagine that there will be a lot of international trade going on into Africa and from Africa. And so, yes. Uh, so, yes, Abraham, if you have any connections or if you know anyone who potentially might be interested, absolutely, yes. Uh, it sounds like you're in Nairobi, you're saying yes. So you Great. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Very all good. Right. Yes, so, all right. Well, thank you, everyone, for, for watching live and uh, those who will be watching later in the recording. Thank you so much, Lori. I know how busy you are, a lot of travel, a lot of work to do. So we will have another webinar in a few weeks uh, closer to the completion of the early track and at that time, what we want to do is um, uh, select more or less randomly or whoever applies uh, about four, uh, four teams, and they will be allowed to present what they have at that time. So basically, the ideas, the thought that they have based on the research they will have done at that time. And so it will be a few weeks before the end of the project. So this way, they will be able to perhaps get some feedback from you and uh, use it to polish their work in the remaining week or two. And so obviously we will not be able to allow every single com uh, team to present, but we thought, you know, if it's like three or four, each gets about 10 minutes uh, this way and then maybe five minutes of feedback. So this way it probably will be representative enough to kind of steer them in the right direction in the remaining time. So. Wonderful. And Voss, I'm going to email you a few pieces that you yes, can share. Yeah. 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 So we do have links to some of the brochures right there in the challenge instructions. You can click on the link and you get them electronically. But yes, whatever else we have, we will add it to the list. So this way you will be able. And obviously you have the website of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, so in the YouTube channel, so you can also type that. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. And uh, yes, uh, have a nice day for those of you who are in the United States and uh, well, uh, the Americas. And good night to those of you in Asia and Europe and Africa. So, Great. Right. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.